So to fetch information, the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to our front end code. Okay. And why don't I okay uh, go over here and the first thing that we will do is import axios from axios okay this is the first step and then we will use two things from react use effect use state and we will also need the router because we are first going to look at the client end code so use router from next router okay now i know that there is one problem in that's going to happen in our code but let's see what that problem is actually um you know we are running our application on localhost 3000 and the api is on localhost 8000 so they are different domains and we will land up with the course issue cross origin um, you know policies will uh, stop us from using the api but we will also see how to handle that so router is use router it's a function so we have done that let's just say we have a variable called tag which we get from router.query.category okay so we will get the tag from the url which is fine and then let's just say we use the use state hook okay to have posts and set posts use state okay and then to fetch the information we will use use effect hook okay uh, that is done and the syntax is i think it's an empty array and now here's the thing we need an async function which uh, does a fetch of the data now obviously this will not work like this in here okay it will it will complain so let's just try that out and i will show you that it doesn't work so constant response equals await axios dot get our url is let's just say for now it's web it's a hard coded thing later on we will change it so console dot log response response is fine i'll save come over here and if everything is fine it should complain that an effect must function must not return anything besides a function okay so that's clearly um, something which means we cannot use it like this so what do we do we can wrap this entire thing inside a function which is a sync okay and call it within the use effect so a sync function fetch blog posts okay Put the entire thing over here okay it is on the new line console.log we can also do set posts dot data if and if you're lucky we should see a change in our component well, um, for this video i'm using edge browser because my brave browser didn't have that component for react dev tools okay it says state is undefined that's bad and i think the api call is not working as well something is wrong in our code so what is it i have a sync function fetch blog post okay that's beautiful i have created a function and i just assumed that it will be called automatically how silly of me okay so now we have the data right we have a console which says i have data it is showing all the latest 10 blog posts and our state has 0 to 9 10 posts 
added. That's interesting. Localhost 3000. And I thought course will be an issue, but it didn't. Mm, okay, maybe localhost does ignore it. However, I think you still need to know if you are facing this kind of a problem, right? Um, what you can do is create a middleware first, PHP uh, artisan make middleware called course. I'll just keep that in place. I think a course middleware comes by default with the new, yes, trusted proxies, trusted hosts, all subdomains of this application URL. Okay, so I think this is already handled that, you know, if you know, the URLs are in the, um, I mean, anything which is in local host is getting added as trusted proxy. And that is the reason um, you know, we don't face this problem. However, if you want to whitelist a few URLs, you can use this code, which is, uh, we create a middleware, which is a course middleware. And then what you can do is use this code which says domains is this okay, localhost 3000 and then if we get request server http origin and then the origin is that particular value and if that origin is in our whitelisted domains we then allow that okay and here you can um, you know, whitelist all the headers which you are expecting you know to uh, to be whitelisted from that particular domain for example if you think that authorization is not a header which you are expecting from the domain you can just remove it and it will work okay so once that is done once you add the course i think you need to go into your kernel.php for http and you need to add it here okay um, but yeah definitely i mean i think that the latest version of laravel already handles it and that's the reason for localhost we are not facing that issue however you know if you are putting it on the internet and if you are running your api on a different domain if if it is not a subdomain you will face this problem and that's when you can use this piece of code okay again subdomains will work i think because you know the code was working like that so subdomains are fine okay anyways so we are able to fetch the data and i think the only thing pending from our end is to loop that particular data uh, and show the blog post so why don't we do that we need to first check for posts okay and if the posts are available then we do a post map so post comma index I need this entire thing inside a div. Okay. It's an arrow function. Right. Return div. Inside the div, we can do h2. In h2, I know that I will get post title. In a p tag, we can do posted on post dot published at or no it is published date i think published date let me quickly check my database uh, where is my post table i have published date and i have the tag name obviously so uh, posted on comma tag colon post name could have been tag name but that's fine i think we can live with this key equals index we are iterating so this is important and now let's see it says there is a network error what is the network error hmm. star b but only one is allowed i think my this code is conflicting because there are two course related addresses so 
that was creating a problem but yeah obviously now as you can see we are able to get the entire data the 10 blog posts based on you know, the API call we are making to make it dynamic in nature what we can do is come over here um, I'll convert this wait a minute into a template string and have this as tag refresh this is fine and if I do travel I get the articles for travel only and as you can expect now this will mean I'm on the home page I click on articles and I get this I head back Okay, and let's just change this learn to maybe travel index.js. Right. Hmm. Just copy, paste it here. Travel blogs. No, no, no. I will rather use this one. I'm a bit lazy on typing things too much so sorry about that travel articles travel posts obviously these are not the final ones so you can just ignore but the <coughs> important thing is that when I click on web articles it takes me to the list of web articles and this takes me to the travel posts right however you need to understand that right now what is going to happen is this depends on my api server which means if i close this and if this doesn't work then this doesn't work as well so basically our app in this particular case is dependent on the api server which is fine if you have a completely dynamic application you know if your next uh, js app uh, app is handling something where the data is changing every time and you need to make an api call that's fine but as i told you right my use case is not a dynamic app my use case is my own blog which doesn't change very often i don't make blog post uh, every every day or you know i write an article maybe once or twice a month so I would rather want that all the blog posts or all the pages are HTML pages. And how do we do that? Okay, so that's something which we will see in our next video.